Right, I'm back for another cold MX-5 update. So I've been driving the car around for about a week or two now. I've just been taking it steady for the most part and it's been behaving itself pretty well. But one thing it does have a tendency to do is just cut out when you're approaching a junction or some traffic lights. So basically when you're rolling to a stop, you clutch in, the RPMs drop and the engine just dies, meaning I've got to crank it back to life again. Now this happened to me last week and I had an idea, base timing. I never checked it. Now, part of the reason for that was I didn't have my timing light, but I do now. So there's no excuses. Let's check it. Now, the reason this idea popped into my head was because of the many years I spent mucking around with ignition timing on the Capri. Now, although technology has come a long way since then, we don't see much of distributors or rotor arms anymore. The fundamentals of ignition timing are the same and the effects that ignition timing have on an engine are the same as they ever were. So a quick story, and it will be quick, I promise, and it's relevant. When I first got the Capri many years ago and I started mucking around with engine tuning, I had this idea which was to fit a 1.6 cylinder head onto the two litre engine that was in the Capri. So basically a 1.6 Pinto head onto a two litre block. And the idea behind this was that the smaller combustion chambers in the 1.6 head would increase my compression ratio and ultimately give me more power. So I did it, but unfortunately it turned out to be way too much compression. I think when I sat down and worked it out years later, I was running close to 12 to one, which is just way, way too high. Uh, and the negatives far outweighed the positives. For example, I had to run the car religiously on Shell V power, and I also had to set my ignition timing to zero degrees at idle. And that was the only way I could stop that car pinging or pinking under high load. Now, obviously, if I'd have known then what I know now, I could have gone into the distributor and altered the advance curve, but we're talking quite a long time ago and I didn't know how to do that. So anyway, why am I going on about this? Well, what I learned from that little experiment was that setting your ignition timing or base timing to zero degrees makes the car run like garbage. The idle quality was disastrous to say the least. It cut out quite often and when it cut out, it was quite difficult to restart. So are you picking up what I'm putting down here? I think I've got an issue with the base timing in this car and if I had to guess, I'd say it was retarded because although it's not as extreme as the Capri, it is showing those kind of symptoms. So let's check it. So obviously with this car being ECU controlled rather than a distributor, this process is slightly different to what I'm used to, but what does remain the same is how we hook up our timing light. So the red terminal that goes to the positive side of the battery. Now, obviously in the MX-5, the battery's in the boot, so I've had to daisy chain some jump leads together to reach to the engine bay. The black terminal, I've grounded that on the side of the engine block here, and then this terminal here clips around the spark plug wire for cylinder number one. And that is our timing light set up and ready to go. Right, this is where things start to differ from the Capri a little bit because what we're actually trying to verify here is that the ignition timing that the ECU is telling the engine to run at is actually what the engine is mechanically running at because there can be an offset. So we're basically calibrating it to make sure that when, for example, the ECU says to the engine run at 20 degrees before top dead center, the engine is going to run at 20 degrees. So thankfully here in Mighty, in the tuning software, it makes it quite easy for us to test for this. Right, so I've switched the ignition on and we're in mighty here. So where I need to go now is down to this ignition driver box down here. And there's an option called fixed fire. And I want to turn this to yes. Now what this is gonna do is make the engine run at 10 degrees before top dead center constantly all the time. So now I need to go into the engine bay and check what the engine is actually running at. All right, so I've painted some Tipex on the two timing marks on the crank pulley down here. Uh, there's two on the Mazda. I've no idea why you need two, but anyway, I've highlighted them both. So when the engine's running, and I'm gonna start it up in a minute, I wanna see these timing marks line up exactly like this when the strobe light flashes. And that will indicate that number one spark plug is firing at 10 degrees before top dead center. If they don't line up, then I know I've got a timing discrepancy, which I need to correct.
Oh, I knew it. I knew it, you know, as I'm hoping you can see from the footage there, this engine is a good four or five degrees retarded because I know that the ECU is telling this engine to run at 10 degrees before top dead center. And what I'm actually seeing the engine running at right here is more like five or six degrees before top dead center. So I'm hoping that goes a long way to explaining some of these running issues I've been having. So now I just need to jump back into the car, get on mighty and correct this. So we're back in Mighty here and what I need to do now is adjust this trigger offset here in the engine driver menu. So you can see that on the base map this was preset to 102 so as I'm currently about 5 degrees off I'm going to add 5 degrees to this number and change it to 1. Oh, 07. There we go. Now obviously I have added 5 degrees to that base figure there because I am 5 degrees retarded. If you were advanced you'd want to take it away from that base figure instead. So I'm hoping that little adjustment has corrected our timing discrepancy so let's start this car and check it. Right, perfect. That was absolutely smack on those timing marks. So now I can be 100% confident that whatever command this ECU gives to the engine regarding ignition timing, the engine is going to do exactly that. I am so happy about that. I can't tell you. I almost overlooked this step and I'm so glad I've come back here and double checked it because that really did need an adjustment. So before I get too excited and carried away, there's one final really important step that I need to do and that is go back into Mighty here and turn that fixed fire box back to no because I do not want this engine running at 10 degrees before top dead center all the time. So back in here, change that to no boom job done so that's another step in the right direction and I am confident that adjustment is going to vastly improve how this car runs and I am not just talking about the stalling either I'm talking about everything because how that car was running before was basically like opening up the ignition timing table in mighty and retarding every cell by five degrees that's going to make any engine more sluggish and less economical so yeah that's another bump ironed out in the road to supercharging this car which I will get round to eventually, I promise. I know I've been a little snowed under, uh, literally snowed under with the ECU stuff recently, but I think I've about pushed through that now and it's time to start throwing some parts at this car and making some boost. So if you want to stay up to date with the build, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Thanks and I'll see you for the next episode.